Silas is back. Be kind. When was I ever anything but kind to him? But I'll not have the fellow back. I told him so last hand, didn't I? If he left then, I said, that ended it. What good is he? Who else will harbor him at his age for the little he can do? What help he is, there's no dependent on. Off he goes always when I need him most. He thinks he ought to earn a little pay, enough at least to buy tobacco with, so we won't have to beg and be beholden. All right, I say. I can't afford to pay any fixed wages, though I wish I could. Someone else can. Then someone else will have to. I shouldn't mind his bettering himself. If that was what it was, you can be certain when he begins like that, there's someone at him trying to coax him off with pocket money. In hay and time, when any help is scarce. In winter, he comes back to us. I'm Shh, done. Not so loud, he'll hear you. I want him to. He'll have to sooner or late. It's worn out. He's asleep beside the stove. When I came up from Rose, I found him here, huddled against the barn door, fast asleep. Oh, miserable sight. And frightening, too. You didn't smile. I didn't recognize him. I wasn't looking for him. And he's changed. Wait till you see. Where did you say he'd been? He didn't say. I dragged him to the house and gave him tea and tried to make him smoke. I tried to make him talk about his travels. Nothing would do. He just kept nodding off. What did he say? Did he say anything? A little. Anything? Mary, confess. He said he'd come to ditch the meadow for me. Bryn. But did he? I just want of to know. Of course he did. What would you have him say? Surely you wouldn't grudge the poor old man some humble way to save his self-respect. He added, if you really care to know, he meant to clear the upper pasture, too. That sounds like something you've heard before. Warren, I wish you could have heard the way he jumbled everything. I stopped to look two, three times. He made me feel so queer. To see if he was talking in his sleep. Oh, he ran on Harold Wilson. Oh, you remember, the boy you had in Hay in four years since. He's finished school and teaching in his college. Silas declares you'll have to get him back. He says as they two will make a team for work. Between them, they will lay this bomb as smooth. Oh, the way he mixed that in with other things. <laughs> he thinks young Wilson a likely lad, though daft on education. You know how they fought all through July under the blazing sun. Silas up on the cart to build the load, held alongside to pitch it on. Yes, I took care to keep well out of earshot. <laughs> Will those days trouble Silas like a dream? I couldn't think they would. How some things linger. Harold's young college boy's assurance piqued him. After so many years, he still keeps finding good arguments he sees he might have used. I sympathize. I know just how it feels to think of the right thing to say too late. Harold's associated in his mind with Latin. <laughs> he asked me what I thought of Harold saying he studied Latin like the violin because he liked it. <laughs> that an argument. He said he couldn't make the boy believe he could find water with a hazel prong, which showed how much good school had ever done him. He wanted to go over all that. But most of all, he thinks if he could have another chance to teach him how to build a load of hay... I know, that's Silas' one accomplishment. He bundles every forkful in its place and tags and numbers it for future <laughs> reference so he can find and easily dislodge it in the unloading. Silas does that well. He takes it out in bunches like big birds' nests. You never see him standing on the hay he's trying to lift, straining to lift himself. He thinks if he could teach him that, he'd be some good, perhaps, to someone in the world. He hates to see a boy the fool of books. Oh, poor Silas. So concerned for other folk. And nothing to look backward to with pride and nothing to look forward to with hope. So now and never any different. Look, Warren. Part of a moon is falling down the west, dragging the whole sky with it to the hills. It's light pouring softly in my lap. I can spread my apron to it. She put out her hand among the harp-like morning glory strings, taut with the dew from garden bed to eaves, as if she played on her the tenderness that wrought on him beside her in the night. Warren, he has come home to die. You needn't be afraid he'll leave you this time. Home? Yes, what else but home? It all depends on what you mean by home. 
Of course, he's nothing to us any more than was the hound that came a stranger to us out of the woods, worn out upon the trail. Home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. I should have called it something you somehow haven't to deserve. Silas has better claim on us, you think, than on his brother? Thirteen little miles as the road winds would bring him to his door. Silas has walked that far, no doubt, today. Why didn't he go there? His brother's rich, a somebody, director in the bank. Oh, he never told us that. We know it, though. Oh, I think his brother ought to help, of course. I'll see to that if there's need. He ought to right to take him in, and might be willing to. He may be better than appearances. But have some pity on Silas. Do you think if he had any pride in claiming kin or anything he looked for from his brother, he'd keep so still about him all this time? I wonder what's between them. I can tell you. Silas is what he is. We wouldn't mind him. But just the kind of kinsfolk can't abide. He never did a thing so very bad. He don't know why he isn't quite as good as anyone. Well, he won't be made ashamed to please his brother, worthless though he is. I can't think Sai ever hurt anyone. No. But he hurt my heart the way he lay and rolled his old head on that sharp-edged chair back. He wouldn't let me put him on the lounge. You must go in and see what you can do. I made the bed up for him there tonight. You'll be surprised at him. How much he's broken. His working days are done, I'm sure of it. I'd not be in a hurry to say that. I haven't been. Go, look, see for yourself. But Warren... Please remember how it is. He's come to help you ditch the meadow. He has a plan. You mustn't laugh at him. He may not speak of it, and then he may. I'll sit and see if that small sailing cloud will hit or miss the moon. It hit the moon. Then there were three of them making a dim row. The moon, the little silver cloud, and me. Warren? Dead.